Well, I've been teaching AP Physics C since the early 80s, and it's, you know, started out as a pretty standard, you know, lecture lab type of course. In mid to late 90s, I had become aware of this uh, physics education research that was going on around the country, but particularly at the University of Washington, and I, I spent two sabbaticals learning about their program and kind of understanding what their approach was. So it's completely tutorial based, there's no lecture. There are labs, but the lab component is woven right into the tutorial part. And tutorial means that they are given packets and they get in groups and the packets ask them very, very specific questions that let them build their understanding in the course of trying to consult with each other about how to answer those questions. The questions may look simple, um, but they're Generally, they're the kind that elicit deep thought about the basic understanding that they need. Is it true that there's still yeah. current, though? That's true. I mean, <laughs> they're all connected. potential difference. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. There is none, because it's this side and that. Uh. They are asked to be thinking 100% of the time they're in the class. They are not asked to be sitting receiving information, which is a passive activity and it's not nearly as engaging, and it's not nearly as difficult to be the person who's doing the thinking all the time. As a, as a learner, having it explained with more than one voice, not just the teacher's voice, but other students' voices, and it's the back and forth, it's not, it's not a delivery, it's a nourishment of an idea and the development of an idea. So if this is both the same brightness, they have to have the same amount of current. They so each have the same amount of current, right? So if the current over here has to be constant, kind of, since it's like in series, yeah. this can't flow any current, because <laughs> they're the same there brightness. There you go. Uh -huh. This is doing the whole job. For me, what I'm trying to model is to not tell the kids anything, but to respond to a question with a question. And the question is very carefully phrased so that it doesn't, you know, it, early on it can be frustrating for the kid. Just tell me. Just tell me the equation I should use. I can do it if I just know the equation. What equation do I use? That's a question I have all the time. And I'm always saying, I, I don't know about from equations. I'm talking about ideas. Tell me your idea, because I want to first find out where the student is and then, you know, ask the questions that will lead them from their understanding to the one they want. Like why it wouldn't light, even though there's current going through here? Okay, well, why do you say there's current going, you're saying there's current going through seven? Uh, yeah. And why is there current going through seven? How do you know that? You know, you hear all these buzzwords that, that this does happen to fit. You know, it is student-centered learning. People use the word inquiry and it means different things to different people, but to me it means to build your understanding on the basis of question and answer, on the basis of doing an experiment and looking at the results and talking about it and you know, building it up rather than being told something. 